Welcome to the Little Thespian Podcast. We've been on a bit of a hiatus, but we're back today with episode 8 with singer, dancer, actor, and so, so much more, Jess Nicholas. She's an amazing performer and an amazing person. So without further ado, let's hop in to episode 8 of the Little Thespian Podcast. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the eighth episode of the Little Thespian Podcast. On today's episode, we have actor, singer, dancer, and just lovely, lovely person, Jess Nicholas with us. So hello, Jess. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm good. Long time no see, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, you know how we joke about that, but it, it's crazy. I haven't seen you in such a long time. Yeah, well, I haven't been at Abbott in like years. almost three, almost three <laughs> years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But you've been doing um, a lot of work in theater, so I want to just give you the floor uh, for a bit. How has your experience been in Brockville studying musical theater? Um, it's different. Um, it's weird. Like the the environment is a lot the same because it's like a small town, so it's not very chaotic. It's a lot like St. Anne's, and like in that area where it's kind of everyone knows each other. It's a lot of students. Um, But the actual program, um, a lot of people are like, why'd you go to Brockville for the program? Like, why didn't you, why did you move to like a small town? And I was like, well, it offered more of a focus on one type of theater. Because at Abbott, like, you know, it kind of the straight theater, but then you have like Camille Delarte and then you have like mime, so you kind of touch different bases. But with this one, it's strictly music theater. Um, and I like doing that. We touched like on Shakespeare a bit. Um, we started doing that in second year, which was really fun going back and kind of remembering everything I learned at Abbott and being like, what can I apply to that when I'm doing Shakespeare at my new school? Um, it's different, but it's very similar. Like, we're all very close, just like at Abbott. You get very close with people very quickly. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's definitely a different experience is what I think it is. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's as cohesive and as loving as it is at uh, Jack, because I'm, I'm, I'm glad you like it, and I'm glad uh, you're coming to the end of it, too. So yeah, that's, last, that's great, last, right? year. <laughs> last year. Last <laughs> year. Well, that's, that's great, though. I'm glad you found uh, another um, place of which you feel like it's home, and it's, it's good to see that um, you can pursue uh, even more studies outside of just uh, studying in one spot. So I'm happy for yeah. you. Thank you. You're welcome. It's, it, it's weird because I was telling um, one of my friends the other day, it was like, this will be six years that I've done post-secondary because the, the one I have it is three. 
and this one's three years at St. Lawrence. So it's like six years of just studying theater and it's like how much more can you learn but I learn like I know everyone on the show has said this but it's like I learn more by like going into my classroom and just like being there and seeing people kind of do their thing you know like we have we have one teacher who actually really reminds me of Terry I don't know if you ever had Terry at Jack but he literally like when I saw this teacher, he literally was like a splitting image of him. And he said something that Terry said to us that if people were in my year, they would probably remember. And it was, if you want to be a duck, be a duck. And I was like, Terry literally said that to me. So it was like, it was like kind of weird to see the two like combined together from like a straight theater versus like a music theater. Like it was just weird. <laughs> But uh, shout out to Terry Donald. Um, obviously, I don't think Terry's watching this. No. But um, if he... But you never know. <laughs> Terry, because even though we didn't have him, or I didn't have him at Jack, um, my God, uh, the man's a legend. Um, legend. I'm glad you also had um, another legend um, over in, uh, in Brockville. Um, but um, to shift gears off of that... Um, I ask this to every guest, as you know, how exactly did you get into theater and then pursue such a long history uh, of it in your life? Um, for me, it was like kind of weird, the like way I got into it. Like it was, it's normal, but not in a, in a sense. I got into theater because my dad's parents love theater. They love it. Um, they have, like, subscriptions to, like, every single theater around their, like, area, and they'll go and see, like, every single show that they can, because they love it. And growing up, it was just, like, a norm for me to go with them. Um, and I remember the first show I ever saw was Singing in the Rain in Vancouver. And I remember... I had little, I had on these, I was like four years old. I had on these little tiny tap shoes <laughs> that my mom bought from like a shoe store. <laughs> and they were like loud. Like, I don't know if you've ever properly heard a tap shoe. Like they're very, very loud on like regular floor. So I'm like walking in and I'm like sitting down and I'm watching it and I'm so excited. And the halftime comes up. <clears throat> so we go into the lobby and I'm like doing the little dance that I saw him do. And everyone was like watching and they were like, oh my gosh, this girl is just like tapping in the lobby. Like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so we go back and the usher made me take my shoes off because he thought I was gonna be too much of a disturbance. <laughs> so I guess that kind of was like my intro into theater. Like really was kind of, it kind of was always just there. Like my grandparents always took me I saw like Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. I saw, I saw Cats. Not like not like the Broadway versions, but like the touring companies that would come around with them. Yeah, it's nothing like I was born and then it happened. Like it kind of just was a thing in my family. <laughs> oh, but that's that's lovely. And then you also had you're, you're talking all about classic musicals, um, yeah. and so I guess to go off of that. I'm guessing Singing in the Rain was your first musical to watch. Um, but what really sparked the interest into, like, singing? Because you, you do sing as well, obviously, in regards to musical theater. So what sparked that? Was it Singing in the Rain exactly? Or? Um, actually, no. Um, people ask me this before. The thing that sparked my singing, um, when I, I used to live in Vancouver. So I was brought up in BC, and I lived there for about 10 years of my life. Um, and I went to a private school, a private Christian school. And we had a class that was choir. So we'd have like a period where we would be with our music teacher for like an hour or you know, whatever your period was. And we would just practice songs. And he really liked my class that he had, which it's usually done by like grade. So like grade four, five, six, and it would go all the way up to grade 12. And we 
we were in class one day and he said, I signed us up for a like singing competition, which was like this big thing where all the school choirs would go and they would compete and you would win like, I think it was like a cash prize or something and you could apply it to your specific music class and like buy new instruments or buy stuff for the room, like new microphones. Um, so he was giving out the parts and he looked to me and this kid, this other guy who was beside me, and he was saying how he wanted me and him to be the soloists in the song. And I'm, I'm in like fourth grade. No, I think I was younger. I think I was like second or first grade probably. And I was like, oh, okay. Like I never sang in my life. Like I would sing with like movies when I would watch them, but like in front of an audience with cameras and a microphone and people watching me like I'd never had that and I remember in kindergarten I actually had stage fright like I would try and go and sing the Christmas songs that we would do for choir and I would just run off the stage and I couldn't do it so that kind of is what sparked is kind of getting over that fear of being like you're like a kid just try it if you don't like it you don't like it and it kind of just went from there and over time, I started taking lessons and then committed more to actually doing it and putting more time and investing into it. And now it's, I guess, a career in a sense. <laughs> That's crazy, though, because a lot of people think like, OK, we're like the outgoing ones or whatever. Or we're the ones that are so loud and over the top all the time. Mm -hmm. But usually it's the complete opposite. Yeah. That, like, like we bring yeah. up into, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have sometimes that kid who's like the loud one and like becomes the big ruckus in the corner. But most of the time it's coming up as like super quiet and like break out of their shell and try and be more extroverted and trying to find friends. So. Hmm. It, it's, it's, it's crazy. But then to go off of that, um, then you moved on and you became um, you, you were in a musical a couple of years ago and yes, I'm going to bring it up hair. Yeah. How was that? How was doing such uh, over the top and such a classic musical, uh, here in Montreal? Um, so I guess I can start kind of how I got into the show, which is kind of a cool story. So, um, I have a vocal coach in Montreal. Her name is Noelle Hannibal. I love her. If anyone knows her, she's amazing. Um, she has a theater company called In the Wings Promotions where she'll put up shows and she'll do like cabaret stuff or she'll do really anything that she enjoys doing and wants to put out there. So she came up to me one day and she was like, hey, I'm thinking of doing Hair, the musical. I don't know if you've heard it. I don't know if you know what it is. But she had been training me for, I think, at least like a year or two. So she was like, if you want to audition, come to the audition. She's like, I can't guarantee you'll get a role, but come and try out. It'll be a cool experience. So I like went home that night and I like looked it up and I saw kind of the story and kind of the language. And I was kind of scared because I was like, this is really intense. Like, I don't know if you know the story of hair or people watching would know, but it's a big, big political show about like race and stuff. And kind of, it kind of is really relevant to today, I guess. Um, so I like talked with my parents and I was like, would it be okay if I auditioned for the show? Because I wouldn't want to do something that like they wouldn't want to come see because they're like my biggest support system. And they were like, no, if you want to do it, try it. If you don't get it, it's fine. So I was like, okay. So my mom drove me to the audition and we had, it was, it was, it was pretty intense actually. There was a good chunk of people there. So what they did is they split it. It was like a full day and they split it in half. So what they did is they did the dancing portion first with the director or, and choreographer, Nadia. And she just did a basic show that I wanted to use for the, um, the audition. So she taught it, and we had, I think, like an hour or two to learn it. And then she kind of split us up into small groups. 
and she would let us do it a couple times and then she would switch the lines and then she sat at the desk with it was her who was the director and choreographer then it was noel hannibal who was the producer and founder of the theater company and then there was the music director which was ian so it was the three of them and they kind of were just looking around and seeing what they like and then they switched the lines and then we had a bit of a break so we could like grab a snack grab some water some people went to change because we were in dance clothes and they wanted to change into like their singing clothes so i did that too because she suggested it um and then the singing portion happened which was more of a one-on-one -on -one thing um so that was when you kind of went into the room and you sang your two songs for just the three of them and then you left and for and then callbacks happened a couple days later and it was the same thing but instead of it being the one-on-one -on -one for singing it was in like a group so what he did ian did is he kind of put us in groups of like three or four and he would give us parts and then he would like assign like certain harmonies to different people or different lines and be like hey can you try and sing this part can you try and sing this part so for him he told us later on when the show was happening he told us more about how um that was to kind of see how you worked as a group and how you kind of because yeah you can be great by yourself right like you can be great so as a solo person but hair especially is very ensemble like the entire show everyone's on stage no one leaves <laughs> so it's kind of intense so you kind of really need to be able to like work with the people around you so that was that i think the most challenging thing for me in that show was that i was the only person under 25 um so everyone else was like 30s 40s so I was technically, I would have been considered the only one who would have actually been in the tribe because I was of that age. So that was kind of weird being like the one who really sticks out looking super, super young and being like, this is a child versus you look at like the leads who are like 30 or 40 and you're like, that suits more in. So yeah, I was just. It was weird, but it was really fun. You got, I got to like see all these new people and it was at Mainline, so that yeah. was fun. And I think you came to the show, didn't you? I did, I did. Um, and I loved it. It was great. Um, and I guess it was an amazing learning experience then in regards yeah. to um, such an older cast, but yeah, you didn't, you looked great in it. You were great in it, so you're welcome even though it's like several years past. <laughs> um, like remounted like the year after. Yeah. So we put it on twice because the main line called the theater company and was like, it was a huge success. Like we want to do it again. <laughs> so she was like, okay. And then they switched Did a bit of the cast around. Yeah. Didn't, didn't you guys win something? Yeah. Um, yeah. The like, I don't remember what they're called, but it's like the Montreal theater awards. I think they're called like the metas or something mm -hmm. around yeah um hair won like every single award that it was in its category or something well there you go i don't remember exactly but i remember in our group chat like our producer noel was like going crazy she was make sure everyone votes like no 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 and then they all went like the ones who could go so it was like her and the director and the music director and some of the ensemble went, and they won like every category <laughs> that's great though yeah it was fun yeah, well, uh, it, let's not look in the past now. Let's jump to the future. So now that you are going to be um, an, um, an alumni, um, what are your plans after uh, studying? Um, like after I graduate now? Yeah. Um, well, I want to move back to Montreal. Um, nothing. There's nothing wrong with Brockville or anything, but I was mostly for schooling because in Brockville specifically, there isn't a lot of theater because it's so small. Um, so I moved back here. I think I'm going to take like a year off just because I go, 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 go for like six years. It's kind of, you know, some people finish stage at for college and then they take like a year off and then they go to university. 
but like people like us, like we just we're not uh, we're non stop. Like we have to keep going all the time. We can't we can't like stop, take a breather, and be like, who? Let me take a moment. So I think I just need like a nice year to just work, get a job, and then just go audition. Really. Well, it sounds like a plan to me. I'm pretty much doing the same thing. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> except not moving back. I've just I've just stayed here. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, that's great, and uh, I look forward to seeing what you put out. Um, but um, also, um, I know you did covers uh, a while back. Are you looking to also pursue more music stuff now that you've learned more at St. Lawrence? Um, not necessarily like write my own songs, because that I'm not that great at, like, I'm not good at writing songs. I know, like, I can't be like Alexa. Like, I can't do that. Like, she's, like, a different, she's, like, a different species who can do that. Um, but I really like doing covers of songs. Um, I really like putting my own twist on a song that's already been done. I want to do, I think, more, like, musical songs, like, covers from musicals, just because that's more my style and what I've been studying. Um, I think about that, that I used to do those, like those at the back were just for fun, like I had a friend who, a guy who owned the studio, and he was like, you want to come try it out, like, it's a video, but I'm just like for fun, but maybe, I don't know. <laughs> That's good though, I mean, it, it gives you an option if you want to, right, so. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, does that also go with dance now that you've learned so much in regards to musical theater? Um, maybe. I, <laughs> okay, I in my class am the one who has, like, two left feet. Like, if, <laughs> like, for example, in my, in my last, like, in my second year, we did The Little Mermaid at St. Lawrence. I don't care. French chef Chef Louis, but because I was a female, they changed it to Chef Louise. Um, and my choreography consisted of standing in the center dot while a bunch of chefs did these like grand jetés and like arabesques around me. Cause I was like me doing that, I fall on my face. Like that's not, <laughs> that's not gonna Okay we can do something that will make it a bit easier so that you don't fall on your face. You still look funny. So when it comes to I keep do like a split or a, a bunch of pirouettes with but think about theater artists is they have to be able to be consistent with all three like could be the strongest actor in your class but par with the rest you can't get a job which like sucks because it's like you look at it and you see these like big time actors like for example we talk about her in my in one of my classes, Sutton Foster. She is, if you look at her singing, her dancing, her acting, they're all like very similar. Like, yeah, you could say she's a stronger dancer than an actor. Like you don't, you, but you don't know, right? So it's like, you have to be able to have all three in a way for it to work. Otherwise you'll be like, I don't even know the word, you'll be like, delaying yourself because you're kind of behind on things so you might not get that job which kind of sucks hey but i know you have your singing and your acting down pat i can tell you that much so <laughs> um, you're welcome and two out of three is not that bad i mean i can uh, say well, well, yeah, I can our our, yeah our teachers do say if you have a, at least two of the three that are strong then you can work on the one Exactly. It's an Ashtrong, which mm. for me was my dancing. So throughout my like almost three years, I've been 
yes, keeping my singing and my acting like good, but really focusing on the technique of my dancing. So for example, like when you point your toe, I really want to make sure my point when I'm like doing jazz or ballet improves over time. So it's not consistently staying at one angle. Hmm. Yeah, no, like you're, you're kind of talking foreign to me, but I completely understand <laughs> in a way. It's like, um, yeah, I, I did not understand it either. <laughs> I like talk all these dance terms and I catch myself and I'm like, why am I saying that? Oh, I've been to auditions and they're like, yeah, you know what they do in ballet? Yeah, we're doing that. And I'm like, well, <laughs> guess it's not up for me. Or you know what I mean? Like it, the <laughs> yeah. dance call is usually either where I get cut or somehow I, I come out of it in a, in a better way. But yeah. yeah, it's true. I mean, sometimes you can be a triple threat, sometimes not so much, but it's, it's all hard work, right? Yeah, so. it's really like your determination. Exactly. Best you work. Might, you might not have all three, but if you show that you're good and you're strongest too, like they'll keep you. Of course. And that's what our, that's what our teachers tell us. They're like, if you show, that you're willing to work hard and improve on the one that's not your best, they'll they'll see that and then they'll be like, I can work with that. Like I can I can help them improve. I can help them learn from this. Exactly. And I guess to go off of that, do you have any more words of wisdom for people? I ask this to every every guest. Do you have words of wisdom for people that may want to pursue musical theater or just theater in general? Um I think like, like it's gonna sound harsh, but like I mean it because I needed this when I went in. It was really grow a tough spine or like tough skin, I guess is the expression. Um, Because if you're looking specifically at music theater, it is a tough business. Like you could walk into the room and instantly they'll be like, no, sorry. And you could have literally said nothing to them. But our teachers tell us all the time, they're like, they might have just seen you walk in and you're just not the style that they were going for. And our our dance teacher specifically, she always says, she's like, don't take it to heart because of the way that you walked into the room, you know? Which is like, I don't know, like, you need to grow like tough skin, but you also need to learn to kind of Ex- really accept criticism too because we have people in our program who like constantly take um like cri- critiques or like um as like advice from a teacher or someone trying to help them as like them bashing them and being like rough and rude to them and i'm like no like you need to learn to take the critiques that they give you and kind of turn that into a learning experience, which a lot of people can find like hard. And I know this like advice sounds like really harsh, but like, I don't like, I don't want to sugarcoat it. You know, I don't want to be like, go in, do your best and you're going to get a role. Like, no, like all of us in theater school know you're not in the room on your first audition that you ever do and walk out of the room with a job. Like you really need to be able to like be able to walk out of the room and be like you know what I did what I could if they don't like it that's okay they wanted someone else you know they wanted someone who is taller they wanted someone who has more singing experience they wanted someone who is a brunette they wanted a guy who can sing to a b flat instead of an a you know so it's like you kind of just have to be able to go in do your best come out and be like, you know what? I did it. That's it. <laughs> There's always another day tomorrow, right? That's exactly. how I look at it. It's like if you're so set on one thing, like it's going to drive you insane. Like you're going to go home and you're going to lay down and you're going to be like, that was awful. That was terrible. Nah, 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 nah. And our teachers all the time, even with our like school shows, they're like, after your audition, go do something that makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Whether it's you go get ice cream, you go for a walk. You read a chapter in your book, you do a workout, you do anything, you know, you go to a friend's house and you make tea. Like that's what I did after a little, the little mermaid auditions. I went over to my friend's house and we made tea and we watched a movie. 
while we waited for the cast list, you know, like you just do something that distracts your brain from, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that was terrible. That was awful. That was so bad. And you kind of just let it happen. And that's the thing too. Like, unfortunately, this might sound harsh, but you hear more no's than you do yeses. Exactly. So you just got to kind of grin and bear it. Yeah. And that's not even with like music theater. That's with like anything. In general. Exactly. It, you, just, you just see it happen more with music theater, right? Because there's just so many roles and so many people want to do it. They can't take every single person who walks into the room. They would and need like a billionaire's budget to do that. Exactly. And unfortunately, not everyone is trained in all three. You know what I mean? Exactly, like yeah. acting, singing, and dancing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, that's, that's amazing advice in regards to just, there's another audition coming up. You're going to do a million auditions. You might get half of that. You know what I mean? You know, you, you can't also work, like be like, I'm going to get famous. I'm going to get my role and lead role in a Broadway play. Like, no, you, all those Broadway leads, and all those Broadway stars, they started from somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, they were close to living on the street because they couldn't pay their rent. They were taking workshop classes to improve their skills. They were doing all these different things to get to where they are. They didn't just wake up one day and someone was like, here you go. Here's a lead role on Broadway. Like that, that, that's like a rare occurrence that ever happens. There's a reason why um, the term struggling actor is a thing. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, But uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's an, yeah, that was a great point. And it's true. I mean, if you guys want to go into musical theater or theater in general, um, it's a very wide um, and very big community, uh, not just here, but in, in general. Um, it's a lot of people love to hear musicals. They love to see musicals. They love to do musicals. They also love to do theater because, or film or whatever form of media, um, because it's one, sometimes very beneficial in the pockets. Not all the time. Most of the time it's not. Um <laughs> But it's also because of the passion. And if you have passion for it, go for it. Um, And if auditions and whatever scare you, I hate to break it to you. Most people, even actors um, that have been doing it for years, don't like auditions all the time. Um, It's true. um, Mainly because... I hate them. I hate them. Right? It's just, it's, it's the business, unfortunately. But like Jess said, go and do something you like doing right after it um so you just get your mind away from it for a bit and then when they contact you whether it's a yay or a nay it could change everything or you move on to the next one that can potentially do the same yeah and it's like kind of to add on to what you said our teachers all the time are like the the difference between someone working a nine to five job and an actor is when you're an actor you are your own business you know you are your own treasurer, you're your own president, you're your own whatever. You're basically walking into the room for your audition and you're selling your business. We had an, our, one of our teachers came up with an al- analogy from like Shark Tank. When they walk on the stage in Shark Tank, they're selling their product. So it's like, as an actor, when you walk into the room, you sell the product and you are the product. So you want to show the best version of that product that you can. That's, that's a great analogy. Um, and I think I heard that from Andy Cook and Jason Howell, just yep. shelling them both out. Um, yeah. Because they're great. Uh, and if you guys study in Montreal or John Abbott, um, you're going to have the pleasure of probably being with these guys. And yeah, it's just they're shout great. out to all the staff at Abbott and at St. Lo- uh, Lawrence um, because they're they're teaching you great um as well so yeah we love them <laughs> yeah, we do um okay so unfortunately we have only a couple more questions left but i'm going to formulate it into one big question um okay. so um now that you've done Abbott and you've done saint lawrence um what has been um your most rewarding uh parts there um and at john abbott um during your time learning And what has been the most difficult and most, but yet most um, transcendent for um, your career now moving forward? I think 
my most rewarding role I ever had at St. Lawrence. I'll start St. Lawrence and then do Abbott. Um, St. Lawrence was probably was probably we were supposed to do sweet charity. Um, but then, you know, the coronavirus happened and everything. Um, and I was in the ensemble. And the thing about the ensemble in Sweet Charity is a lot like the ensemble in Hair, they're constantly moving, constantly like the whole thing about the set was that like these pieces like rotated and then they would like set them. So the people moving them are in character, but they're moving set pieces, you know? So that was really fun because it almost felt like a ballet and everything was so like synced and everyone was like moving with such great, it was just really fun to go to rehearsal every day and kind of like see everyone's input because our director, Cameron Carver, people know him, he's like huge in Toronto. Um, he's all about kind of like taking his idea and sharing it, but then he'll love taking other people's ideas and kind of adding it if he likes it. So like he was very involved with collaborating everyone and making sure everyone felt like they had a purpose, which was really nice because you were able to kind of have a voice and not be like, no, we're doing this. This is how it's happening. If you don't like it, too, too bad, so sad. Like, no, he was never like that. He, and if you couldn't do a dance move and he gave it to you, he'd be like, cool, we'll switch it. We'll change it. He's like, if you can't, if you don't like it, if you don't want to do it, we'll change it. So it was really cool just to kind of have the experience of having a director really involve his cast and not be set on a singular idea. And if he saw it evolving and didn't like the idea, he was like, okay, we'll change it. That's good. That's cool by me. That's fine. Like he was just so open to it. So I think that was my most rewarding there. But it's tricky because there were some roles that I got that I do consider very, like, yes, I'm very thankful I got them. But at the same time, they're also, they were also challenges. But I think my most re rewarding was probably in Arcadia. Only because she was, like, a big role. And I remember going into the auditions in front of Andy, and I was like, I don't know if I can, like, pull this off callbacks when I'm like reading the scenes with Aaron and like we're doing Septimus and Thomasina it was like all coming together and I could kind of see the thought of him being like no these two could work together it was also like an all-female so it was all females which was really fun um and it was just cool to take on like a different dialect and be able to, you know, do a different voice. So we had Shannon come in and have, do like three weeks of dialect practice with us. And I remember sitting there with Aaron and we would like write in every single word and how it was pronounced. So that's also like learning how to do a dialect, which was like really fun. I don't know, it was just fun to kind of play this really considered her like the female version of Einstein because that's basically what she was. She was basically the smartest girl. It's really cool kind of seeing all the other characters evolve like Camilla's character who was like this really weird like ditzy guy who would like come in and be like I know exactly what I'm talking and like it's just so funny and like seeing like, the old time which was Time and Julie's time, then it was like the 1990s with like Ron, Camilla, and Olivia, and Melanie. So it had all like modern day people and seeing the differences. So that was really rewarding. Um, and then the next most challenging, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna like combine it to one because there's one role that I've had that was probably my most challenging I've ever done. Um, and that was Hermia in Midsummer. Um, for like different reasons. I do not consider myself a Shakespeare actor. Like I I like 
I like seeing it like performed. I love sitting in like script analysis and like reading the heck out of it and like finding interpretations. Like I love that aspect. But when you tell me to be the role, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I have no idea. So in our third year, Terry comes up to us and he's like, we're doing Midsummer," And everyone in my class was like, okay, cool. Cause at Abbott, the third year's always do a show, right? So we thought we were, cause we had done like Tennessee Williams, we'd done Arthur Miller. We were like, he's gonna pull out like a classic. He's gonna pull out an American classic playwright and we're gonna do it. And then he comes out and pulls out Shakespeare. And we were like, okay. So that, that was challenging, not even just for me, but for like everyone in my class. Like we all, we had studied Shakespeare with Terry the semester before. So we knew how to like analyze it, but we had no idea how to like put the thing, like put it all together kind of with like performing it and then like analyzing it, but also interpreting it for your own. Because the thing with Terry is he was always saying, don't, he, he literally said, don't watch the movie. Don't watch another production. He's like, I don't even want you thinking about another, like, version of this. He's like, I want you to go home, read it, and put your interpretation on it. And it's hard, right? It's just hard to kind of put your own twist on it and be like, how can I relate these words from, like, 300 years ago to my life now? And I remember the exact scene that was the hardest for me. <laughs> and the only, there's two people who would remember, Courtney, who you interviewed, and John, John Graham, because he played Lysander. So the thing about our cast is we were double casted for certain roles. So we had two Hermias and two Helenas. So my Helena was Courtney, who also is like one of my closest friends. So it was fun to kind of, because they're best friends too, right? So it was, it was easy for us to go to rehearsal and be like, we're best friends. Um, but the hardest scene was the scene after Puck messes up the potion and puts the potion on Lysander's eyes. And when he wakes up, he's in love with Helena. Um, <laughs> the reason that scene was the hardest for me is it's, I don't know exactly which act number it is, but she comes in and it's like, why you pup, why you puppet, you knit, you this, you na na na. She's like angry at him. And I remember I was going through like some really bad personal stuff where it was for me not walk the stage and cry. Like I, I like remember being backstage and like bawling my eyes out and then like having to wipe my tears and be like, no, that's not what she is right now. She's fine. Like she's angry. And I remember um, John came into the green room and he was like, I don't want this to be taken personal. He's like, I don't want you to think that I'm doing this out of spite. But he said what I didn't, what I didn't want him to say which I won't repeat because like it's not relevant now, but he said something that he knew would basically get him like kind of break me and crack me. And apparently I was walking down the hallway and I just looked pissed. I looked mad, I looked pissed, I looked angry. And so after that show, Terry comes to the back and he looks to me, John and Courtney, and he was like, that is the best fight scene you have ever done this entire semester and it was kind of it was challenging because I really had to like push myself and trust myself which like any actor right like when you get a role and you're like you're reading the lines and you're looking through it and you see that like it's scary you know sometimes you don't want to put yourself in that vulnerable position but with Hermia it like kind of grew over time into it wasn't just Hermia it was Jess as Hermia, and I was basically embodying her, but using my own experiences to kind of bring her to life. Because you can see so many versions of 
Helena and Hermia and Puck and Lysander and I don't I don't even remember the other characters, but you can like see so many versions, but they're all they're all correct. At least if they're done like properly, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, but like if you watch a version of it and it like touches you and then you watch another version and that one touches you, it's like neither is right or wrong. If the character or I guess the actor really takes time to kind of build this character, that's what's the most rewarding. And that's what was most challenging for me because she had so much that you could give because like, that's the thing where Shakespeare is, he has so much stuff for his characters. Like you can get so much context for them. And it's like intimidating because you want to get all this in. You want to pack it all in and be like, it has to be so good. No, no, no. But at the end of the day, if you don't get one of those things, it's okay. Which like, I didn't understand at first, which is why it was challenging because I really wanted to fit, you know, she's angry. She's angry. She hates her best friend. Now she's in love. But like, if you go out and you don't feel that, show what you feel, which I didn't know back then. I didn't realize that I could do that back then, that you could kind of just really be yourself and kind of let whatever emotion happens, happen and not be like, okay, this is how we're going to perform it. I'm going to look at my partner. I'm going to be angry. Like, no, let's not, you can't plan it. And I was always so used to planning out my characters and it was just so bad and it's so wrong. Don't do that. <laughs> Never plan stuff out. <laughs> Don't do that. But that's the thing, too, with, like, Hermia, ar arguably, she's one of the most, um, she has one of the biggest arcs, I think, in most Shakespeare, because yeah. she literally just, she's, she's everywhere. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's the thing, too, like, it, it definitely was shown um, in Midsummer, and I love that production so much. It's one of my favorite that Jack has done, um, because it was just beautiful. It was... And it was done tremendously. So we should be very proud of that, honestly. When you think about like the double cast, right? So if you mm. had one show and then you see like Kelly and Jesse, who were the other Hermia and Helena, and then you see me and Courtney, like it's, it's different, you know, because each person has a different outlook that they're using. And even with like Thomas and John, who were Demetrius and Lyster, they would always say, you never know a different scene partner, which is why it was fun to actually be double casted. Because you can see how the other person interprets the line, which is also fun. Because it's like, I may say the line a certain way, but then when Kelly does it, she might have said it a different way. And I could be like, wait. And then you kind of pick up on that and be like, what if I tried it like that? That's the thing with Shakespeare, and I think that's the the thing that why it's so um why people do it so much and why it's one of the most classic um plays actually it is the most classic playwright yeah um pretty much uh shakespeare it's just you could watch it a hundred times thousand times and it can change it's transcendent adds a word that i used earlier it's it's something that everyone has a different experience towards it's still like so relevant you know exactly like when you look at the world now you can even like even like musicals too you can mm -hmm. think about like a Shakespeare play that could work in that sense too that's why too a lot of Shakespeare has been turned into musicals look at Kiss Me Kate and Kate. several <laughs> there's a lot <laughs> so I mean yeah it's true and uh, I guess to go off of that um Unfortunately, it is time to go, but it was a great segue because I have a new series that's going to be coming here as well. And I'm also going to talk about who's coming next week, even though I've already announced it on my Instagram. Um, so um, I'm going to be doing a new series entitled um, Shakespeare Sit Downs, of which we're going to be talking to people, actors, um, and talk all things Shakespeare. Um, and it's great because A Midsummer's Night's Dream um, so it's our first one. So if anyone wants to jump into that, let me know on Instagram. I'm going to be putting out um, basically a list of all the Shakespeare um, plays that I'll be covering. 
it's basically the whole list, but um, excluding some because people don't know um, all of Shakespeare's works. Um, so uh, check out for that. Also, next week or next episode, we're going to be talking to Thomas Rodriguez. Yes, the Thomas that Jess was just talking about. Um, all things Opportunity Theater, all things theater, and just some great things coming up for him and his company. So it has been great talking to you, Jess. I'm glad you're well, and I'm glad um, you have had such an amazing journey um, there at St. Lawrence. And uh, yeah, it was great catching up with you. It was fun. I, I try and make these fun. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much for being on. Um, and uh, yeah, if you have any final remarks, you can go right ahead. Um, I think just, well, first off, the fact that, 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 that Thomas is the next guest and like I was talking about like Midsummer, like that's really funny. Right. Like, that's didn't, so like. Didn't even plan that. Wow. <laughs> um, I think like to kind of just end it kind of what I said earlier just like don't like because every actor scared of auditions is what you were saying earlier mm -hmm. don't feel like you have to go in and like be perfect like the our our teachers at St. Lawrence they always talk about when you walk into the room the panel wants to see you succeed they're not there to make you like crumble and fall like, they're not going to either be like, let's make a joke. Let's make them cry. Like, let's make them leave hating themselves. Like, no, they just want you to go in and they just want to see who you are. Like, mm -hmm. just go in and be you. If you're trying to put on a facade, they're going to know. Because I don't know how, but these panels have, like, magic powers where they can, like, tell when someone's being not themselves and not genuine. Like, I don't know how they do it, but it happens every time. <laughs> And it's true. Really what they want is for you to succeed so they can have a person in their show. Yeah. They, they they're not looking to make you yeah. fit. No, they don't want someone who's perfect. Like our, our panels, who they bring in are like people and directors who work in the business. And they literally say, I don't want you to come out and be perfect. Like our, their goal all the time is like, we want to see if there is potential in you. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. They'll look at us and be like, do I see potential? Do I see myself being able to teach this student? Because it's, it's a learning experience. Can I see myself teaching the student, teaching them how to do X, Y, Z? And if yes, cool, they're in my show. Granted, that's not how it works in like the real world, but it kind of is like a stepping stone and help for what would be out in the real world. Because they all do the same thing too. They want to see if they see that spark. If, and if they quit. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, great way, great way to put it. And a great way to leave it off too. Um, so before I end, um, I shine a light on each guest that I talk to. And Jess Nicholas is one that needs the light shined at her. She's great. She's amazing. She's just a bundle of joy. And I was so happy to have you on. Um, it was a great time. And uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this episode. Jess, did you enjoy it? I did. I hope people weren't annoyed that I was like talking for like minutes. No. That's... <laughs> and it, it, it was very educational today. And I yeah. really enjoy that. I would so... kind of be really like, like on the ball. Because sometimes I watch stuff and people sugarcoat it so much. And, like, it's not like that. Like, you can't sugarcoat it, especially if you want to be in music theater. Like, it's fun. You'll have the time of your life, but it's hard. Like, mm -hmm. it is. You're going to sweat. You're going to cry. You're going to break. Like, but it's okay. Like, you're going to be fine. <laughs> and I just wanted to be more like, yes, it's hard, and here's why. <laughs> well, there you go. And, yes, everyone on this uh, channel, um, I'm going to – I'm going to – hit everything in regards to theater and unfortunately it's not all sunshine and roses all the time guys but uh it is so rewarding and i was gonna say that it's very rewarding it's very yeah, it's very rewarding excuse rewarding. me <laughs> um, <I'm twister. laughs> right yeah um and uh yeah so thank you so much for being on jets and uh thank you all for joining us 
on the Little Thespian podcast. I will see you all in the next episode where we talk to Thomas Rodriguez. Bye, Jess. Bye. The lights are off. The curtain has fallen. And it's time to say goodbye. Thank you all for joining us on the Little Thespian Podcast. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to ask, either down below or on any of our platforms. On the next episode of the Little Thespian Podcast, we talk to Thomas Rodriguez. All things Opportunity Theatre, all things theatre, directing, acting, and so, so much more. So, you're definitely going to want to check out episode 9 of the Little Thespian Podcast. It has been a great time doing these first eight episodes, but we still have many more to come. And Thomas Rodriguez is going to be a great guest, and I really, really hope you all enjoy episode nine of the Little Thespian Podcast. After that, we will then have a very special episode 10 with people I cannot say right now, but it's going to be a great time. So if you guys have liked this video, don't forget to like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to us here on YouTube. It really helps. Also, definitely go check out all our platforms and all Jess's platforms down below. Thank you, Jess, for being on this episode. It was great having you, and it was great catching up. I truly cannot wait to see everything that unfolds in your career and with all my guests. It has been a pleasure doing these first eight episodes, and I cannot wait to further talk to so many amazing guests and thomas will definitely be one of them next week so hopefully you all have enjoyed like i said if you guys did you know what to do and we will see you all on the next video also there will be a video in regards to shakespeare sit downs coming very shortly so don't forget to check that out as well with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will see you all on the next video. This has been your host, Matthew Crandall, and I'll see you all on the next Little Thespian Podcast.